Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 1 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Irenes. In class 11, we introduced organic chemistry to you and we told you about the hydrocarbons. When a hydrogen of a hydrocarbon is replaced by a halogen atom, we call it a halogen substituted hydrocarbon. And that is what is studied as, and they can be classified as the haloalkanes and haloarenes. Now, what are these halogen atoms? Halogen atoms are the elements of the group 17 of the periodic table. They are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and estatine. So whenever one of the hydrogens of a hydrocarbon is replaced by an atom of a halogen, we call it a halogen substituted hydrocarbon and you can classify them mainly into two categories that is the haloalkanes and haloarenes. We'll be studying about the classification of these hydrocarbons, the halogen substituted hydrocarbons in the next part. But right now let us just understand these two words. Let's take an example. And the example is methane, C H H. Methane is CH4. It has four hydrogens. So if one of the hydrogens of methane is replaced by, let us say, chlorine, it forms chloromethane. So this now has become a haloalkane because one of the hydrogens of the alkane has been substituted by a, uh, by a halogen atom. So it, is, it has become chloromethane. And of course, you can have more substitutions. So if you had two chlorines, you would have a dichloromethane, three chlorines would be a trichloromethane and so on. But we'll understand that later. Right now, we just need to know that any hydrocarbon or rather any alkane in which a hydrogen has been substituted by a halogen would form a haloalkane. And uh, haloarenes, on the other hand, when you replace H, by X, where X is a halogen atom, in an aliphatic, aliphatic or aromatic hydrocarbon. So let us take an aromatic hydrocarbon now. Aromatic hydrocarbon would be benzene, the simplest one. So what is the benzene like? The benzene structure is like CH, single bond, CH, double bond, CH, single bond, CH, double bond, CH, single bond, CH, single bond CH and double bond here. So if one of the hydrogens here in benzene is replaced by a halogen, this becomes chlorobenzene. So what is the difference? In the case of haloalkanes, we had alkanes in which the halogen atom was substituting a hydrogen which was attached to a carbon which was sp3 hybridized. Whenever carbon forms four single bonds, it is sp3 hybridized. But if carbon forms even one double bond, it is sp2 hybridized. In the case of haloarenes, it is a carbon to which the chlorine or the halogen has been attached is sp2 hybridized because these two carbons are attached by a double bond and the, the other bonds were single bonds. So one of the bonds with hydrogen is broken and hydrogen, the Chlorine takes the place of hydrogen, resulting in the formation of chlorobenzene, which is an aromatic hydrocarbon, uh, 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 what halogen substituted hydrocarbon. So you have haloalkanes and haloarenes, and that's the difference between them. So in haloalkanes, the carbon bearing the halogen is sp3 hybridized, and in haloarenes, the carbon which is bearing the halogen is sp2 hybridized. So that's the difference between haloalkanes and haloarenes and that is what we are going to study. We are going to be studying about these in this chapter. Now, why do we need to study haloalkanes and haloarenes? How are they important to us? And why are we interested in this category of compounds? They are very useful compounds. What are some of the uses have been listed in your book and I'll just repeat them. They are used as solvents for non-polar compounds. Do you know non-polar compounds do not easily dissolve? because usually polar compounds would dissolve easily in water. In that case, we instead of using uh, 
uh, instead of using water, you could use these hello alkanes or hello arenes to dissolve these nonpolar compounds because it is based on the principle of like dissolves like. Nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. So these can be used as solvents and they help to dissolve substances which are nonpolar in nature. And those substances which are slightly nonpolar, for them, if you add a little of this hydrocarbon, it would uh, kind of weaken them and make them soluble. Now, the second use is that these halogen substituted hydrocarbons are also used as the starting material for the synthesis of many compounds. Do you know hydrogen, when it is attached in a covalent bond, is not very reactive? But a halogen atom is far more electronegative. And therefore, when it attaches itself to the hydrocarbon, it becomes more of a reactive center of the hydrocarbon. It becomes that site where reaction can take place. Therefore, for many chemical reactions, these uh, halogen substituted hydrocarbons are used as the starting material because that part, that portion where the halogen is present would kind of trigger reactions. It would help the reactions. So it is used as a starting material for the synthesis of many compounds because that halogen can be substituted easily. Let us now come to the third use of the uh, halo alkanes or halo arenes. There is a, an antibiotic that is uh, which contains chlorine, a chlorine containing antibiotic which is produced by soil mi microorganisms and it goes by the name of chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol, this is an antibiotic which is used in the treatment of typhoid fever. So it is used in medicine also. Another example of where the uh, in normal life we are, we have uh, these halogen substituted hydrocarbons is in the uh, in the hormone thyroxine that is produced by our thyroid glands. Our body produces an iodine containing hormone which is known as thyroxine and the deficiency of this thyroxine or the deficiency of iodine leads to a problem called goiter and if this thyroxine is um, and, uh, is secreted too much or too less it results in two conditions that is hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism where the thyroid is underactive in hypothyroidism and it is overactive in hyperthyroidism so uh, the next use of these hydrocarbons will be that it is used in synthetic halogen compounds now hydrocarbons these synthetic hydrocarbons not from any natural source but synthetically prepared halogen substituted hydrocarbons like chloroquine it is used in the treatment of malaria again in medicine not only the naturally produced halogen substituted hydrocarbons but synthetically prepared ones also can be used Another example is halothane. It is also known by the name of fluorothane, uh, fluorothane, and the formula is C2HBrClF3. So it has, it is highly substituted uh, hydrocarbon. Where you in ethane you have C2, the two carbons of ethane, and one hydrogen. All other hydrogens have been substituted by bromine, chlorine, and three fluorines. So a highly substituted halogen substituted hydrocarbon that is halothane or fluorothane it is used for as an anesthetic and in surgery it is used to actually um, uh, turn a person unconscious so it is used as an anesthetic during surgery another use of these uh, hydrocarbons is that certain fully fluorinated compounds are being considered for potential blood substitutes in surgery it has been tried that certain of these, fluor uh, these fluorine, highly uh, substituted by fluorine compounds, they can be used as blood substituents. Usually when surgery is being done, the blood of a person, at, in certain, especially in the uh, heart surgeries, the blood is completely drained out and it is collected and the surgery is carried out and then the blood is put in. So a lot of blood loss occurs during surgeries. At this time, a blood substitute can be used and that substitute could be purely synthetic. A highly fluorinated hydrocarbon could do the job of real blood. So these blood substitutes, it, it is potential. It has not started happening yet. It's just uh, a potential uh, possibility or rather it is a possibility in the future. 
So these were the uses where you have haloalkanes, where the uses of haloalkanes and haloarenes in real life, in industry, in normal life, or in medicine, we find a wide application of these haloalkanes and haloarenes. In industry, to produce more compounds. In medicine, to, as I gave you a few examples, and in normal life, where, you, where I talked of the iodine in the hormone thyroxine. So, uh, hydrocarbons, I mean, haloalkanes and haloarenes are an important class of hydrocarbons, and that is what we'd be studying about in this chapter. With this, I'd wrap up the first video. Thank you for watching, and if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye for now.